My name is Javier Hernández and my nickname is Chicharito. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are checking out ray tracing and DLSS in Doom Eternal. That's right, despite the game launching well over a year ago now, it has taken until this week for the game's RTX patch to arrive. So, in this video we are going to be finding out just how well AMD and Nvidia's current generation of GPUs perform when enabling those ray trace reflections. We'll also take a look at the differences made to image quality with both the ray tracing and DLSS modes. To do that, we're using our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around the Intel i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1 GHz on all cores, and that is paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard. We also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600 MHz. Before diving into the performance, it is also worth pointing out that in the settings menu, there's only a simple on off toggle for the ray tracing. Unlike Cyberpunk and Control, for instance, where you have different quality settings, in Doom Eternal, it's only ray trace reflections, so we have a simple on off toggle. Additionally, due to VRAM limitations with 8GB GPUs when running at 4K, as well as ray tracing, for our testing today, at 1080p and 1440p, we're using the stock Ultra Nightmare preset. At 4K though, we're using the Ultra Nightmare preset, but we've dialed back the texture size to the Ultra setting. And that is purely because 8GB cards simply refuse to enable ray trace reflections when running at 4K with the Ultra Nightmare preset. So I just wanted to make that clear. Diving into the results then, starting at 1080p. The first impressions are that frame rates are high across the board, even on the RX 6700 XT, which is AMD's slowest GPU in terms of ray tracing. On that card though, we're still averaging 120 FPS on Ultra Nightmare settings, so that's pretty decent in my book. The RX 6700 XT is bottom of the pile though, coming in fractionally behind the RTX 3060, but it's also 24% slower than the 3060 Ti. In fact, even the 6800 is slower than the 3060 Ti at 1080p, while it's also 19% slower than the RTX 3070, despite being more expensive when looking at the MSRP pricing. We can even see that AMD's flagship, the RX 6900 XT, is coming in just below the RTX 3070 at 1080p, with the RX 6800 XT only just about faster than the RTX 3060 Ti. Clearly, the AMD GPUs can't keep up, but compared to other games like Cyberpunk, they are faring much better overall with ray tracing enabled, and it's not like the frame rates are low to begin with. Still, if you want the best experience, the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 are the top dogs. The 3080 is exactly 25% faster than the RTX 3070 here, averaging 221 FPS. And we can also see that the RTX 3090 is only 8% faster than the 3080. Moving on to 1440p now, here we can see that the picture is changing and AMD's GPUs are doing better at this resolution compared to 1080p. The RX 6800 is now faster than the RTX 3060 Ti for instance, while both the 6800 XT and 6900 XT pull ahead of the RTX 3070. Here, I really do think we are seeing an example of the increased VRAM capacity benefiting those AMD GPUs, with the 8GB GPUs from Nvidia suffering as a result. There's a couple of examples that we can point to to demonstrate this. Take the 8GB RTX 3060 Ti versus the 12GB RTX 3060. At 1080p, the 3060 Ti is 28% faster, but at 1440p, that's been cut to a 12% margin. And remember that these are two GPUs of the same architecture. The RTX 3060 Ti was also 11% faster than the RX 6800 at 1080p, but now at 1440p, it's actually 5% slower. It's not even like the AMD GPUs are just better at 1440p as a result of architectural differences. Take the RTX 3080 versus the RX 6900 XT. 
At 1080p, the 3080 is 29% faster, but its lead actually grows at 1440p, up to a 35% margin. That says to me it's not RGNA2 just being better at 1440p, but it's the 8GB frame buffer which is hurting both the RTX 3070 and the 3060 Ti, which is why the AMD GPUs are able to pull ahead at 1440p. That being said, frame rates are still very good across the board, with the 1% lows staying above 60 FPS even when using the 6700 XT, while the likes of the RTX 3070 and RX 6800 XT are averaging about 120 FPS using the Ultra Nightmare settings. As for 4K resolution then, remember here that we had to drop the texture pool setting down to Ultra to allow us to test those 8GB cards. It's possible that this is part of the reason why we are now seeing better relative results from the 3060 Ti and 3070 as they are now edging ahead of their AMD rivals. However, we can also see Nvidia GPUs are just doing better at 4K anyway, with the RTX 3080 now 43% faster than the RX 6900 XT when it was 35% faster at 1440p. As frame rates go when enabling ray tracing, however, you do have to say the results are still impressive. Even the RX 6700 XT is managing 45 FPS on average, which it certainly couldn't do at 4K in Cyberpunk or Watch Dogs Legion with ray tracing turned on. Both the 6800 XT and 6900 XT will be good for a 60 FPS experience too, but as we'd expect, the RTX 3080 and 3090 are well clear at the top of the pile, both averaging over 100 FPS, which isn't bad at all. As a final performance comparison, here we're looking at performance with ray tracing turned off compared to ray tracing turned on for both the RTX 3080 and the RX 6800 XT. While the AMD GPU is still managing over 120 FPS at 1440p with ray tracing enabled, it is losing more performance by enabling the ray tracing. Its frame rate is cut by 51%, whereas the RTX 3080 loses 32% performance when enabling ray tracing. To be clear, that is still a pretty significant hit to frame rate, but we can clearly see that ray tracing has a bigger impact on the 6800 XT. Yeah. That's going to do it for our performance data then, but is the ray tracing worth enabling to begin with? Jumping into the side by side comparisons then, it's worth remembering that the game only has ray trace reflections, so we're not going to see a difference in the shadows or with the global illumination. With that said, I think your views on the ray tracing in Doom Eternal will vary based on your feeling of the technology as a whole. Personally, I've actually come around to ray tracing and quite like the extra dynamism I feel it adds to the environment, particularly with the large number of metallic and glossy surfaces in this game. That said, there are several occasions where the difference is quite subtle, and for such a fast-paced shooter, you may well feel it's not worth bothering with. It is definitely cool to be able to see the Doom Slayer reflected in different glass surfaces though, and like I said, I do feel the reflections make the scene feel more dynamic and a little bit less flat overall. So personally, I would play with the reflections enabled, particularly as frame rates are very high to begin with. So you're still getting great performance even after enabling the ray tracing. Of course, DLSS was also added as part of this RTX patch with quality, balanced and performance options. Sticking with quality mode at 4K, here the results are hugely impressive, as we have come to expect from the technology. It is also worth pointing out that I used the DLSS 2.2.6 DLL file from Rainbow Six Siege for my testing, and it really is a struggle to spot differences compared to native 4K. In this outdoor scene, we can even see DLSS is able to resolve some fine detail that went missing at native 4K, as seen when looking at the spires on the left hand side building. Even when looking at a moving example, I would absolutely use DLSS, and I really couldn't say I noticed much visual artifacting or ghosting. I'm not too sensitive to that sort of stuff to begin with, 
but like I said with the 2.2.6 DLL, it really is very impressive from a visual perspective. That being said, we didn't see huge gains from enabling DLSS quality mode. On our RTX 3060 Ti for instance, frame rates increased by about 30% at 1440p and 4K. Of course that is still absolutely great, but you don't get as much of a boost as you would in Cyberpunk for instance, and that's simply because the frame rates are that much higher to begin with in Doom Eternal. So then, that really is going to do it for our look at ray tracing and DLSS in Doom Eternal. Whether or not you want to enable those ray trace reflections really is going to be up to you and your personal preference. The thing I would say though is Doom Eternal is a great game to give it a try, simply because the performance was superb to begin with. That means even if you're taking a 40% hit to performance, chances are you're still going to be getting a very smooth experience with those ray trace reflections turned on. That goes for both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. While the RGNA2 cards we tested did see a bigger performance hit when compared to their Ampere rivals, I still would say that Doom Eternal is one of the better examples of ray tracing running on an AMD GPU. Take the RX 6800 for instance, at 1440p using the Ultra Nightmare preset with ray trace reflections that GPU was still able to average over 100 FPS and I know you wouldn't be getting anywhere near that level of performance in the likes of Cyberpunk and Watch Dogs Legion. So that really is going to do it for this video. If you liked it please do toss me a thumbs up but as always let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've already tried out Doom Eternal with ray tracing enabled, let me know what you think of it. Or if maybe you're going to be trying out this weekend, be sure to let us know how you get on. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell. And why not come chat with us over in our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While there, you can also find a link to our merch store where you can pick up a cool t-shirt like this one I'm wearing here. And you can even consider backing us on Patreon, where you get access to exclusive giveaways and you can see some of our content early. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.